Hi folks, in today's video, we're gonna be stripping this thing down. Trouble is, it needs total refurbishment, so let's have a closer look at it and get this one sorted out. See you in a minute. Right, well, as you can probably see, this one's been left out for many, many years here. If I spin it around the other side as well, you can see at the front there, all the paint's coming off. As you see, they don't actually prepare these very well from uh, from the factories. You've probably only got one coat of paint on these, so uh, I'm gonna have to strip this whole lot down and uh, start the restoration on it, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching this. Right, okay then, there you can probably see from the time lapse that we've basically stripped most of it down and uh, we've obviously still got the wheels, the adjusters and the engine to take out. We've still got to get this done now, as you probably saw through the time lapse, I've squirted the underneath of the adjusters with um, some WD-40 or lubricant. So let's just show you roughly what we've got to do here now, just with cleaning this off. Well, as you can probably see there, it's uh, this is one that I've actually left out. This was my own personal lawnmower or one of my personal lawnmowers that, as you can see, it's uh, it's been out in the open and this is the sort of thing that you normally find when you're finding old lawnmowers. And as you know, we've wiped some of this down, but uh, this was all caked up with um, debris and stuff like that, just like the uh, coil here. But everything's there, it's all original. The springs are still there. The governor flap is there. All the adjusters are there, present and work okay. And you can normally tell that by the wheels, for example, how hard probably a mower's work. This one's actually not done too much work because we did have two lawnmowers as you can see in my other videos and the wheels there are in pretty good condition as you can see there. So uh, yeah, they've normally got a code on them. As you can see this one here, I actually got in 2005. Yeah, one of my own personal ones and the only reason I'm doing it up is because it's still solid to deck. And as I say, it's going to someone I know, so I do know it's a good mower. I did need a service, but um, obviously, as you can see, just left it standing out for a few years. Things like the uh, exhaust manifold can be shot blasted and painted. Carb can be stripped down and be serviced. And these are just recover them up and uh, give them a little bit of a rub down. And all in all, I'm just letting the deck penetrate now, the fluid. And don't forget, if you're going to tip a mower up like I'm doing there, don't forget the engine oil is still in here. Uh, if you're going to do it, that's the way you want to lift a, a mower up. All the oil still sits in the engine. I've got the wheels to undo there, as you can see there. We've got the engine bolts. There's three of them around there. I'll give them a good squirt of WD-40. And obviously, I'll give all this clean out. And obviously, the, uh, the blade will also get some sort of refurbishment in the way of a repaint, a sandblast, a repaint, and a, a, a resharpen and balance as well. So I'm going to just carry on now, try and get these wheels off, get the engine off. So I'm going to just carry on now and get these wheels off and uh, I'll see you when we strip this down and we've got the uh, deck clear ready for some work.
all that I'm left with now is my rotten deck, which I can now obviously strip all the paint off and uh, get it ready for respraying. As you can see, the paint here is literally coming off in big flakes. As you can probably see there, all the way around, look, there we go. Look at that, look. But still, the, the deck is lovely and solid, so I'm not too worried about all this, to be honest with you. There's no sign of any holes. Engine's out, as you can see. That can be now cleaned and now serviced, drained of oil, and obviously repainted as well. That'll have a new plug in it, and I'll also service the carb as well. The wheel things here, I'll put them in the uh, sand blaster and clean all them up so they're all uh, fully working and get them repainted. Right, well, we're inside now, and we're now going to just tackle this deck. Uh, I'll just give you a closer look at it so you can see the sort of condition it's in. Well, as you can probably see, we've done a bit more scrubbing down. The deck is actually very, very solid, and it's 12 years old, but as you can see, where, where it's come off, you've got some surface rust here. And what I want to do now is obviously to try and get this into the sandblasting cabinet. Let's get this in the old sandblaster now, and let's try and clear this deck up. Right, okay then, so we've done a little bit of sandblasting. A little bit awkward in that size cabinet to get one of these big decks in there, but uh, there's many ways you can strip one of these down. It hasn't got to be stripped all the way down, as I said to you before. In this case, uh, we're not going to go no further than what we what you see here. All this paint is solid on there, so I'm going to actually leave it on there. If it does come off where it needs a bit of treatment, then I'll sort that out. But uh, there's other ways to get the paint off. And one of the other ways is sanding it off. So I'm lucky enough to have a compressor here. So I'm just going to whiz along now, put you on uh, time lapse, and you can see me just blast this down with the old sander. Right, there we go, all coated now with the rust treatment, the vac tan treatment, as you've seen me use before in the cars, and that will actually stop the rust from uh, coming back, that will create a barrier now, and that actually is a rust preventer and also a primer as well, so there's no reason why after this we can uh, paint straight over this, but what I will do, as you can probably see there, we've got some slight pit in there from the rust and what I'll do is just put a thin skim of filler just over that front bit there and around this area there maybe and also possibly there or whatever uh, only a thin stop of filler and I'll give that a quick sand down tomorrow and then we'll be ready for priming so I'm going to leave this tonight to go off and to create its uh, hard coating and we'll pick this back up tomorrow morning right okay then here we are the next day and everything's gone off lovely let me just show you the way this uh, vac tan treatment looks when it's actually gone and cured right well as you can see it goes this sort of grey blue colour and basically everything there has been converted now that surface of rust which we had there uh, has all been converted if I come around the back you can see more so on the back because this was as I say this was still rusty and I actually give this a good sand down and the wire brush down as well and 
this is now all actually cured so that ain't gonna come back it's protected now so I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of what they call stopper filler now and just put some very very light filler over the top just to take in some of these potholes on here uh, where necessary and feathering a few of the edges here and then we'll sand that down it's a lovely day outside so once I've done that I'll put it outside and it can dry literally in no time and I'll be sanding this and priming this very shortly so I'll see you in a minute Right, here we are, they've all been sandblasted. I've taped up the handles now. We're ready just to give them a coat of uh, silver paint now. Let's show you them a little bit closer. As you can see, both sides have been done. I'll have to spray them this side first, then turn them over, and then give them another coat. The exhaust has been done. I'm gonna give that a coat of heat treatment paint. This has now gone off, my uh, filler's gone off. That's ready for its quick sand back, and then I'm gonna be priming that. So I'll just give this a shake for a minute or so and then we'll give these a coat. Right, okay, we'll let that dry off. We'll give them one more coat, let that dry off, and then we'll turn them over and do the back sides. I'm gonna get the heat proof spray out now, and I'm gonna give the uh, exhaust a coat of paint with a heat proof spray. I'm now going to just get the deck prepared now for spraying, but what I've done is to actually sand it all down now. Let me show you. Again, as I say, you've not got to be too perfect with this because uh, it is a lawnmower deck after all. I've done all this with 80 grit paper, and I'm going to use a high build primer on here, which should hopefully take in most of these scratches. I'm not really too bothered about it, but uh, all we've done basically is just get a little sanding disc and use the 80 grit and feather in the edges, things like that where you can uh, not feel the transition now between the actual paint and the, the metal. There is a bit of uh, feel, feel in there, but nothing for us to worry about anyway. So, uh, but there we go, it's all the way around. It's been done, all ready for the paint. And if I turn it over, I've given the underside a good wire brush out as well, just to take off loose flaky paint and obviously old dirt that was there. And all I'm gonna do now is to coat this up with, just like a car under sealer, and that's gonna do the job just to give it some sort of protection from underneath. So. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put you on a time lapse, quickly get this done, and then we'll prime the other side.
Right, okay then, we've done that, we've got the base done now. We're now gonna give the uh, surface a prime with some filler primer. I've already wiped this all down with a wax and grease remover, so let's get on with it. Right, well here we are. The lawnmower is now dried. It's had a coat of the tin red paint. As you can probably see there, it's quite textured there. I didn't even sand the, um, the primer down. I just sprayed straight over it. And just to give it a bit of individuality, I've got a vinyl cutter, which I prepared these Sovereign lawnmower stickers, which I created on there. So I'm just gonna stick that on there, and then we'll lacquer over the top of the actual vinyl graphic and seal it into the surface. So. I'm just going to lay this on now, peel the back it off and get this laid on, so let's do that now. So as I say, this deck now is dry enough for me to lacquer, so I'm going to get the lacquer out and let's give it a couple of coats of lacquer to seal everything in. Ah, that's better. Right, okay then. Let's have a drop of tea first. That's better. Right, I've put two coats of lacquer on there now. This is 2K car grade lacquer. And obviously, you uh, it's not the same stuff as you get in the rattle cans from your do-it-yourself shop. This will be impervious to petrol, so if petrol does leak on this surface, it ain't gonna blister and bubble up like it would do with the normal 1K lacquer that you get in your DIY car superstores. Let's have a closer look at it. I'll show you the sort of finish we got. Right, well, as you can probably see, we've buried that lawnmower sticker under the lacquer it's still wet at the moment as you can see but uh it's turned out pretty nice now obviously going around it as i said i've not done a perfect job here for preparation i'm just letting you see that you can do this sort of stuff with uh not too much problem if you're not very good at body work for example so uh going around it i'm sure you can see there we can still see some marks and stuff but i'm not too bothered about that because at the end of the day it is just a lawnmower it's a little project and Hopefully you can see the sort of results that you can get if you're using the similar sort of equipment as what I've got. If you're gonna be doing this sort of stuff with tin paints, in other words, your top coat, uh, the problem you will come across, as I said to you, is the uh, blistering of the paint once you get some petrol on it, where as this one would be actually okay. Can you actually see there, look, there's the Sovereign label buried underneath the lacquer, and I'm quite happy with the way that's turned out. So all we're gonna do now is to let this thing go off. Let it dry for 24 hours. And then we'll start the reassembly of all the bits. Right, well, the deck's dry now, as you can see, with the lacquer, and it's now time to reassemble and finish off the final bits that I've got to prepare for this lawnmower. As you can probably see now, let's show you. I've put the uh, wheel mechanisms back on. They've been painted, as you know, front and back. And I've also got the uh, rear flap uh, reinstalled again, so that's looking fine. 
and as you can see now it's nice and durable now still a little bit soft the paint but I mean that's gonna harden over time anyway but uh, I'm sure you'll see it's a whole lot better than what it was so I'm just gonna tidy up and tart up a few of these uh, remaining bits now I've done the handles I've actually painted them off camera but um, I'm gonna tidy up the wheels now the engines got to be tidied up before we put it in and also serviced and repainted and then we'll assemble everything back together so I'm gonna put you on time-lapse again but anyway enough waffling on that now let's get this lawnmower put back together see you in a minute Right, there we go there's a few bits bolted back on all I did with the uh, wheels was as you probably saw there in the time-lapse was just give them a quick coat of black I didn't even rub them down it just smartens them up a little bit takes away that worn plastic look sort of thing there is plenty of tread still on these wheels so they've uh, actually look pretty good now that they've actually been done the handles as I've said to you I've literally just give a light rub down used a bit of satin black on them and that's that sorted out as you saw the other bits of plastic I've just sort of give the clean off things like the air filter cover and um, the, uh, the brake cover at the back, little plastic pieces. I've just given them a wipe down and a little squirt with WD-40 and that just cleans the surfaces up now. All I've got to do now is just to service the engine, put a new plug in it, change the oil, give it a bit of a paint up. So we're gonna do that now. So let's, have, let's get onto that. Okay then, as you can probably see there, I've um, removed the carburetor off of the actual fuel tank. Inside here gets very dirty and if you've got an airline, you want to give this thing a good blowout because you do get lots of sediment. Now I've just tipped this out as you probably saw and it doesn't appear to be anything coming out but if you actually look in the bottom and hold it up at this angle, you can still see fluid swishing about in there and you're very, very hard to get that out as you can probably see, look, very hard to get that out. And that's normally all the sediment which you really want to be getting out. So just get a bit of cloth and push it in there. Make sure it's clean, obviously. Don't use tissue paper for this because it could deteriorate and break off in there. And, and just push it in and just tip it up to one edge facing to where you've actually wedged the, the tissue. And you'll probably find, if you give it a little wiggle about of a screwdriver as well, you'll pick up all them bits and pieces and also soak up the residual fluid that's left in there so that's what I've just done there right and let's clean that tank out there there's no more fluid swishing about in the bottom there so I'm happy with that right so before I go any further I'm just going to tape up these labels I want to give this just a quick coat of paint nothing spectacular it's just pure visual aesthetics and um, we'll change the diaphragm on and the uh, gasket on the carburetor as well these are what you want to check. If that priming bulb sort of comes out very slow when it's on the lawnmower, very slow, it can be this filter here, which is blocked up. So this sits in the tank 
and there's also a filter around the main jet there as well sometimes you can sometimes you can't ball that off but I like to give these a blow through as well with the airline because there are little valves in there as well so that's what I'll be doing afterwards but let me just paint this quickly now and uh, we'll then have a look at the carb right okay so let's have a look at the carburetor here as I said to you if the uh, primer bulb comes out slow that's the filter that's normally blocked up that one there so this is the uh, let's take these screws out the fixing screws this is the diaphragm and gasket now as you can see the diaphragm is a very fine membrane here sometimes they come off together with the gasket so and if I just remove that now underneath there as you can see there's a little spring you want to make sure that's retained and then you've got the gasket which comes off last normally these gaskets come off in one go so I've just been unfortunate here right so then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a blast through with some compressed air now I like to get some carb cleaner in here as well so Again, make sure your little filter goes back on over your main jet and make sure your little springs back in place there so I'm happy with that now and I'm just gonna get these bits of tape off now just to reveal the labels again like that again you could do these in an enamel paint something like hammerite smooth for example uh, that's a bit that's impervious to petrol so you should be okay if you use that right okay so that's like that we want to carefully place back on our carb and diaphragm it's probably easier as I say if you put it onto the base of the tank first like I've just done there for example and then carefully put the screws back in the holes they've got leading edges on these screws so they find their way into their holes but just make sure by just holding the carb in place while you're, you're dropping the screws on and once they've all okay it just make sure around the edges that you can't you, you, the, your gasket seating correctly and just literally hand tight not even pinching them down yet I'm just going opposite corners by doing the screws up I'm not doing one fully tight and then going around the rest I'm going literally opposite corners just to nip them up and now I'll just eke them down a little bit more and I'm just going to nip around now one two three four one more and five there we go hopefully that'll be it and there's our carb refurbed now don't forget you've also got this little ring here and there's a little o-ring there as well inside and that slides over the actual intake on the carb if that's missing or not fitted properly your carburetor can hunt and go up and down in revs as well <sighs> right we'll just have a little clear up now i'm going to put you on time lapse we're going to get everything back onto the mower so i'll see you in a minute Okay, here we are here's the finished result I've uh, done a few little jobs which I haven't shown on camera I've like connected the cable up and I've also sharpened cleaned and uh, balanced the blade as well let me just show you the blade we just tip the mower back as you can probably see there I've painted the blade and it's been sharpened and balanced as well so I'm happy with that and looking around the mower 
I'm sure you can see it's a lot better than what it was when we started. When you imagine what it was like and what it is now, there's a big difference. So I have just filled it up with some petrol and let's get it off the stand. And let's take it over to the pathway. Right, well I've not even tried to start it yet, so let's just get that cable up there. Okay, so, right, let's try that. Try it again. Happy days. Well, I know I've done many of these before, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this little lawnmower refurbishment. It's gonna go to a good home now, and uh, I'm gonna be getting two lawnmowers in return, so. It was just a little project. You may not probably do this extent of restoration to a cheap mower like this, like a 70 or 80 pound lawnmower, but you'd probably do it to a 200 or 300 pound lawnmower and then probably make a bit of money on it as well. Or you might do it for a bit of a hobby or to save yourself buying your own lo uh, a new lawnmower when your old one just needed a little bit of TLC and it's actually quite good fun as you've probably seen. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video or this series of videos and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.